Ever wondered how scientists solve problems? Can you apply their methods to find out the mystery of who's been destroying your garden at night? Well, the good news is, you don't need to be a wild head genius throwing random substances together to do that. In fact, scientists follow a systematic approach called the scientific method, which involves careful observation, analysis, and experiment. Now, let's use the method to catch the vandal. The first step in the scientific method is recognizing the problem. In this case, the problem would be, there is an unknown animal that raids the garden for food every night. Moving on to the second step, observing the sign. Use your senses to gather the data, both in quantitative form by expressing it in numbers, such as measuring footprints, and in qualitative form by describing the information, like noting dug holes and plant consumption patterns. In this case, footprints can help estimate the animal's size, and the type of plant the animal having the feast on is important to guess its species. Now, on to the third step, formulating the hypothesis. A hypothesis is a simple, unconfirmed statement based on an observation. It should be testable and falsifiable, meaning that it can be disproved during the experiment. Upon observing the eaten plant, you might deduce that animals such as raccoons or wild rabbits are the likely culprits. If it were rabbits, they would avoid consuming fruits that contain cyanide and certain vegetables, such as rhubarb and leeks, and prefer biting young leaves such as romaine and red leaf lettuce. On the other hand, raccoons are less selective and will eat most types of leaves. Since the rhubarbs were targeted, the hypothesis suggests that a group of raccoons is responsible for the damage of your garden. To test the hypothesis, let's design an experiment where you can manipulate variables or factors. Start by creating an experimental group and a control group. Keep all factors, such as soil condition, soil temperature, and sunlight the same, except for one factor that you're testing. Let's start by spreading wood ashes as a repellent on top of the garden bed's topsoil. The experimental group then consists of areas covered with the ashes, while the control group is the area without the ashes. So, if the raccoons return, the experimental garden should remain mostly intact, while the controlled garden should show increased damage compared to before. After conducting the experiment, analyze the results and compare them to your hypothesis. Take note of how many plants were damaged in both experimental and control groups the next day. Compare your finding and determine if it validates your hypothesis. If it does, you can conclude that raccoons are the garden attackers. However, your task is yet to be completed without showing your findings to others to see if they're able to prevent similar damage the same way or even better. Scientists publish their research in credible, peer-reviewed journals for verification and improvements by others. What if your hypothesis is wrong? Others or yourself can conduct deeper observation, modify hypotheses, and design new experiments. This makes the scientific method an iterative process. Note that an experiment should be reproducible, meaning other similar experiments should yield similar results. We now know that the scientific method is a practical way of thinking. You can apply it to differentiate between poisonous and edible mushrooms, or identify who gobbled your pudding. Other than the term hypothesis we previously learned, there are some other basic terms that we will likely confuse when studying science. They are postulate, theory, and law. What's the difference between them? What makes something called a theory while the other is law? Let's start from postulate. A postulate is a statement or belief that is used as the starting point of investigation. It is assumed to be true and is formed in the absence of proof favor of simplification, or due to limitations such as time or technology. As an investigation starting point, postulate becomes the basis for modifying the variables or conditions of a phenomenon, thus helping to develop a hypothesis. In other words, an assumption that a condition is true is a postulate, and a plausible explanation of the phenomenon, which may contain a postulate, is a hypothesis. A postulate, hence, can also be proven to be incorrect as the investigation progresses. Dalton's postulates are one of the examples, yet his postulates are still considered as a significant contribution that initiated further research about atoms. Then we have a theory. People often misuse this term for mere speculations, like conspiracy theories, when in fact, it is an integrated explanation about natural phenomenon in a broad scope with a great amount of experimental evidence. It is based on a number of well-supported hypotheses. Simultaneously, a theory 
can also generate new hypotheses, which may then challenge the established theory. Thus, a theory usually develops over time. Some theories try to describe past phenomena, which means it cannot be proved directly through experiments. However, scientists are still able to verify the theory by proposing a hypothesis from which they can generate predictions. If the prediction is accurate and supported by strong evidence, then the hypothesis is accepted, proving the theory. Remember that prediction is not necessarily about future events. It is an expected result from a hypothesis assuming that the hypothesis is correct. Another scientific term is law. A law, or rule or principle, summarizes the inexplicable regularity or pattern of a specific phenomenon, often simplified in equations based on observations or empirical evidence. Newton's law of motion, for example, describes the relationship between acceleration, mass and force, but cannot explain why that happens. Some laws, however, may be explained by closely related theories, like chromosomal theory that helps explain Mendel's laws of heredity. Mendel experimented with thousands of garden peas in the churchyard before finding certain patterns of characteristic inheritance, later known as Mendel's law of heredity, principle of inheritance, which help us understand what characteristics are passed down through generations of breeding. Other times, a theory can explain multiple laws, like kinetic molecular theory that explains Boyle's law and Charles's law about gas. However, neither of them can change into the other. Due to their demonstrability, theory and law tend to stay unchanged for a long time until a better statement or explanation, with stronger evidence, challenges them, either replace, refine, or complement. The spontaneous generation theory, for instance, was overthrown by biogenesis theory, while Newton's laws of motion are still in use because they are strongly capable in explaining classical mechanics, even though it fails to describe motion in non-inertial frames of reference. Now, can you give more examples of law? Comment below. Thank you for your continuous support, especially our valued patrons and members who have been encouraging us to keep producing more quality content.